So in this video, I'm going to go over an overview of gene regulation, and I'm going to explain why it's important. In future videos, we'll give more specific examples of certain types of gene regulation, but for now, this will just be an overview. So to begin, let's first remember that all the DNA in your body is exactly the same. So the cells in your eye have the same DNA as the cells in your foot. However, genes are turned on and off to respond to changing environmental conditions. So even though your eye cell has the same genetic information as your foot cell, they're completely different. And that's because different genes are turned on. And so just again, gene regulation refers to how genes are turned off or on in order to produce specific cell types and to respond to changing environmental conditions. And so as you can see over here, I've put a picture of the gene being transcribed and then translated. As you can see here, this is the DNA, and then it's eventually gonna turn into mRNA or get transcribed into mRNA. And then eventually the mRNA is gonna be translated into a polypeptide or protein. And so as you can imagine, there are many ways to control how much protein you have. So you could either control it in the beginning or somewhere in the middle. And so just to list a couple, there are many points of control, but you can modify the DNA. There are ways to silence certain parts of the DNA to make sure that that part of the DNA doesn't get turned into protein. And so one common way of doing that is by methylation. So essentially what happens is you'll learn more about this in biochemistry, but you add a CH3 group to a certain part of the DNA, and that makes it less likely for that part of the DNA to be transcribed. And then another way of controlling how much protein you get is going to be adjusting how long the mRNA lasts. So if you have the mRNA last longer, it'll be able to be translated more. However, if the mRNA degrades very quickly, it'll be translated less. And that can be modified by adjusting the poly A tail. Also, another thing I want to mention is that prokaryotes will differ slightly from eukaryotes with gene regulation. And this is because prokaryotes don't have introns to be cut out. And then obviously, that's not the only thing. We'll go over more in future videos. The last thing I want to go over is the importance of gene regulation. And then, so I'm just going to give an example of prokaryotic gene regulation. So this is an example that will be commonly used, and you'll probably hear about it often, is called the lac operon. So long story short, there are some bacteria that can use lactose to live, but bacteria normally prefer to use glucose. However, if there's no glucose around and there's only lactose, the bacteria can turn on certain genes that will help them metabolize lactose and convert it into glucose. But it's important to remember that this gene isn't turned on all the time because if you have glucose, which is what the bacteria prefers, there's no point in making more protein to be able to break down lactose if you don't need to. And I'm going to go over the lac operon in more depth in a future video. But that was just an example of why gene regulation is important. And so that pretty much sums it up for this video. So what I hope you got out of this was that gene regulations are gene regulation is just essentially referring to turning genes off and on when you need it in response to the different environment that the organism is in. So thank you for watching this video. If you have any comments or questions, please write them down below. I hope you liked the video and found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.